Hi, everybody. My name is David Hughes, and I'm the founder of Plant Village. I'm also the Hook Professor of Global Food Security here at Penn State, as well as the director of the USAID Current and Emerging Threats to Crops Innovation Lab. And so what I wanted to do was try to provide the global community some insight into what we're doing around carbon capture. Uh, so mostly Plant Village is working on crop diseases and climate change adaptation for the smallholder farmers across Africa that we reach and help and engage with. We reach over about 40 million people uh, every week and that's across nine countries and we're on a path to 25 million by the end of 2024 and ideally 100 million by 2030. And so climate change is disproportionately affecting smallholder farmers, but what is a problem can also be a solution. So all of that land that they're on across Africa can be carbon capture sinks. And this is the winning idea we've had for the Carbon X Prize, the Milestone and the Student Award to leverage Plant Village's AI to do AI powered carbon capture cubes. Imagine 200 million farms across the continent of Africa pulling down five tons of carbon per year in the form of biochar, which is a, a durable form of carbon with a plus 1,000 year sequestration. Imagine if we did that, so 200 million farms times five, we get to a gigaton. And so not only do we help the world, but we also help those farmers by having diversified incomes. Our partners, Biochar Life, have already established a very robust system of payments towards farmers, leveraging contracts from groups like uh, Carbon Future, whereby farmers get a very large percentage of the shares of the price of the carbon credit. Of course, all of this relies upon the ability to accurately capture and store carbon in a way that the end user, the customer, for example, whoever's buying from Carbon Future, that individual can be assured that the carbon was stored and in the right location. It was it was put into the ground in the case uh, for sea sinks. And the farmer that did this, or the group of community members that did this, were paid fairly and in the, in the right appropriate manner. And if we don't have a transparent, trusted system, the whole thing breaks down. And so we as a university that have built a global public good called Plant Village, we think that we can play an important role here. Uh, we think we can do this because the university is, is open and, and the access is, is free for all. Uh, in addition, as a bunch of scientists and as a community of scientists, we think the data is incredibly important to be sharing with the global community. So what I want to do is sort of just run through some of the things that we have on our system and then solicit feedback from, from the community out there. So first of all, uh, this is our Ag Observatory. So Plant Village is plantvillage.psu.edu. You won't see any of this until you sign on, but, but once you sign on and then ask for different levels of access, that's what you can see. So in this case, we have the country map of Kenya. We're, we're pulling in information on where it's raining. This is coming from Climate Hazard Center, which, are, which is pulling that from uh, NOAA and, and other sources. Uh, we did also have crop water balance models, which are coming from FAO. And then we have people who've been using the, the tool recently, either what are called Dream Team, who are part of Plant Village, young people across the continent, or, or farmers. And so if we dig into this, um, we can look at uh, records, which are, this is just the last uh, two weeks of records on, on one of our crops, in this case, cassava, coast to coast. So we're just really, really prominent. We've been building this platform up over uh, the last uh, really five or six years extensively. Uh, this really started with a lot of our engagements with the United Nations. So if I just show you our analytics platform here. So we have locust surveys. So we were critical to, to helping the UN save food for 40 million people in 2020. Uh, we have one for fall armyworm, the cassava you've seen. This is for red palm weevil. Uh, Irish potato, sweet potato, wheat surveys, coffee, and so on and so forth. So because we have a platform already existing, we were able to add on biochar tracking onto this. So this is what I want to kind of share with you out there and, and get feedback. So this is an example of our biochar production system. So we have biochar on production ongoing in Burkina Faso and Kenya. So, so if we zoom in into Kenya, this is an area in, in a county called Bringo, um, hugely problematic 
issue with an invasive uh, species called Persopsis juliflora or mesquit. And, and we're working with the local uh, community to remove this. So we're paying people to go in and chop down the invasive weed and then transform that into biochar. So if I look at one that's verified, uh, so it's verified by me, there's others that are verified by, uh, this is Ohm, she, she works for Biochar Life. So there's a lot of people looking at this in real time, and, and this is a critically important element. So if we look at a, a record, we can see the biochar production here. So we have the observer, this is the observer, carbon in this case. I can send a message to that, that individual, in this case, one of our team members using it. Um, if I had some discrepancy with how things were working, I could send the message. I can see the individual farm. Um, so, so I can see a variety of details about that farm. For example, the soil properties, the farm info, um, <clears throat> in this case, whatever was being grown. And we'll come back to that later on. So I can see the individual farm. I've got the farm location. I can copy this to a clipboard. I can put it elsewhere. And um, I can I can look at the details on on the equipment. Um, so we have the active burn here. We have the in this case we use Contiki kills. You can see the biomass in the background. Every individual kin kill, sorry, every individual kill has a, a UUID tag, so you can see that and and you can track it. Later on, we want to have these as uh, pieces of metal that are attached to it. And then you can see the, the finished burn uh, in this case. So, so the finished burn. Now, the important point to recognize is that when the observation was created, we we tapped into a satellite or, 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 or a suite of satellites which are providing geo coordinates. This is something that we invented during the desert locust crisis. So even though we're in the middle of nowhere, there's no cell towers, we're able to get a reliable geostationary track. So this gives us this uh, location here, but it also allows us to calculate how far was this away from this location. So that's important for trust and transparency. We can see that the burn was here, uh, 2.48 meters away or 2.9, 1.6. So we increase the accuracy and we collect the data throughout the entire process. You cannot upload a picture from your phone, from the gallery that you've taken elsewhere. The picture has to be uploaded during the during the um, event, and it's timestamped. So then we get the sequence of pictures, and each picture is then geotagged, and also uh, it has the requirements um, of the of the timestamp. Uh, let me look at another one, for example, look okay. at. Uh, Bromwell's here. We can zoom in here. It's one of these many ones. And so you can see the um, the, the whole system again. Um, you can see the feedstock and you can see the biochar that was produced. And what we do in this case is that we provide a, another QR tag that goes inside the bag. So we wrap that up in plastic. We put it inside the bag of biochar. And we can look at the distance from this compared to when the survey uh, where the survey was uh, or where the kiln was. And so this is eight meters. So we can see that it's uh, it's very close. Uh, and then we also have the timestamp here. So again, we want to be able to follow that through time. And then these are all, all bags of biochar. They're all filled up with the same volume. So we have roughly the same, the same weight. Um, I can go to another one. This is um, if I, if I change the time period, um, Now it's fetching more data. So I can look at something in Burkina Faso, for example. So here we have a different kiln, but the same process. We have the production. There's quite a lot of smoke coming off here. So, so in this case, we are advocating the people to dry out the material very well. So we can send a message to those people. Um, we also have WhatsApp channels where we can just... Um, in this case with Burkina Faso, we we would this is our channel in French with the team there. So we're constantly engaging with them in order to provide feedback on biochar. And I think I probably have to go back a little bit to find some of that feedback. Um, so this is tree planting, tree planting. Um, okay, 
still going back since so I've started. Now I feel I have to finish. Um, but the important message is that it, it's totally transparent, totally open, and, and everybody can see the kind of advice that we're providing to them and, and what we're, in this case, there. this is some, some work regarding the um, material that we're going to be using. So here we have, uh, yeah. So, so some advice here on this. And so we have this community engagement, working with local community members, working with the Plant Village Dream Team, providing that advice backwards and forwards. Okay, so back to our survey. Um, we, we, we produced the biochar and um, here's Evelyn, one of our lead farmers. In this case, she's producing it from Bagasse, a very different situation. So again, also communications with her, getting feedback from her. Um, then afterwards, when the biochar is made, then according to the European biochar certification system, uh, we have another step, which is mixing. And, and so, so we can see in this case, it has been mixed and we can zoom in. This is from Brian um, or John Maika here. So we can see the mixing that's going on. So we've got a photo of the process, same thing. Um, we can see in this case, the manure or the compost, which is being used um, here and then the biochar, which is being used. And this is important because we can we can link this to the production record. So if I click here, it shows me which production record. So those two things, mixing and production were linked and that's important. And, and so then I, of course, I, I've mixed the biochar with, with a fertilizer. So I'm doubling the number of bags if I mix it one-to-one. -one. So we have to track all the original bags that we produce and then the subsequent bags we have to check. Then um, let's go from this to eventually usage. So putting it into the ground. And again, this is still very uh, new for us. Um, if I go to this one, we're still practicing. So again, you can send messages. You can see which farm uh, it happened on and you got photos of the process. So in this case, uh, this is part of a an experiment we're doing as part of the USAID Innovation Lab. So we're planting cassava. We want to check how well the cassava grows with or without biochar and how well it responds to drought. So in this case, we can see this is the biochar fertilizer. This is the QR tag inside plastic to keep it um, um, clean. It's scanned in the field. And then uh, we can do this for multiple bags. And then we put it in the ground. And so again, you have a picture of it in the field being scanned. And you also have the link between here, the mixing record and um, the biochar you. So the biochar is put into the ground and that's how the farmer gets paid or how the community gets paid. And it has to be linked to the mixing, which has to be linked to the linked to the, um, the production. You notice this is in red here, so it's unverified because we're, we're working with the end buyer, for example, Carbon Future, to understand how they're going to verify it. And again, all of this is collaborative, very much, much uh, open, transparent. Everybody gets to see everything. So for example, if I go here on our base camp, uh, so we use base camp in Plant Village for, for pretty much everything. But if I look at you know Hans Peter, who's a, an expert on on biochar at the European Biochar Certification System, and he's just you know weighing in on questions that we have, providing um, input. Jason is the CEO of Biochar Life, and he's talking to an engineer here, Pavel, who's talking to Hans Peter, and everybody's just engaged. And all of this is you know everybody can see this. There's no there's no secrets here. Uh, we're just asking for comments here uh, on, on different things, getting feedback from different people and so on and so forth. So that's the WhatsApp, which allows us for feedback. So we have a, I can just show you something just from today from WhatsApp from the Artisan Pro. Um, again, I'm uh, asking somebody a question, Dries, for example, on our team who works with IITA. So, so we now talked about five different groups. We have Carbon for Good, um, uh, uh, which is the company that we formed. We have Plant Village, which is the public good, Biochar Life, which is also a company, the European Biochar Certification System, and also European Biochar uh, Certification System and Carbon Future. So when multiple people are looking at the data all the time and, and depend upon the data for whatever their 
not-for-profit or, or private enterprise is doing, then this is a way in which we can ensure greater transparency and trust uh, simply by making it all available to the global public. So let me also go back and talk about how we can do this um, with the scientific community. So here's a farm that, that we have, and this one um, uh, we can, oh, no, where is it going? It's over here. I prepared something. Yeah. So this is a farm. This one is in is in um, Uganda. So we have the farm information here. We have a crop water balance, which is coming from from data from precipitation and chirps, and and also UNFAO's information on productivity of crops given the crop type and the amount of water. This is above ground biomass, which is two NASA satellites, MODIS and Landsat, which is which is then being delivered by, by UNFAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization. It's running a penman monteith equation. And it shows how well things are growing or not growing. Uh, it flat lines here because we it's only updated every 15 days or so. Um, and then this is soil moisture here from NASA, uh, the SMAP satellites showing how it was dry. And now, of course, we've got into the, into the wet season and then expected rain. Then in this case, we've got a picture of the field that we can also see. So I'm showing you all of this because what we at Plant Village have is an awful lot of data from the public sector on, on conditions of soil chemistry, soil moisture, plant productivity, and, and also a variety of statistical or machine learning models which allow us to understand what's happening into the future. And we want to we want to release this is already public, but we want to release all of this with the biochar data. So imagine this farm uh, in Uganda, imagine it captured and stored ultimately 20 tons of biochar over the next, I don't know, five or 10 years. So, so let's imagine that's 30 tons of CO2 equivalent or 37 tons or whatever it's going to be. What is the effect of that? It, it, how does that improve crop productivity? Obviously, we want positive intended consequences, but there could be negative unintended consequences. So, so if we're going to do this massive experiment with biochar where we're putting into fields all over the world, it's important that the global community of scientists and particularly ecologists uh, are looking into this and analyzing it so that we can quickly find out how well we do, or if, if we if we're collectively making a mistake, how do we understand that mistake so that we can um, reverse it or stop it or, or prevent the actions? So, with that in mind, one of the things that we've also done is to develop a a front facing platform. Again, very much work in development. Um, really, really would love uh, feedback. Uh, Derek Moore, who's who's uh, driving this, would especially love feedback. So here we, once the once the biochar uh, has been um, verified, so let me go back here, for example, when, when uh, this one was verified by Ohm, then every hour or so, we, the, the system from the database picks it up and puts it here. So now we have 794 bags which have been produced. Okay, great, excellent. So we're still just playing around and practicing, but obviously this is going to be hundreds of thousands of bags every day. And then we wanna know what is the weight of each bag, the type of biochar, how do we convert, if it's 25 kilograms of biochar from Prosopsis juliflora versus bagasse, then the amount of CO2 or, or carbon captured is, is, is different. So we have those, uh, systems. We also want to be taking samples every time we do something in order to keep it as a reference sample. And, and then we want to know, based upon the current trajectory, when do we get to a gigaton? You know, at the current trajectory, it's going to be a long time. And so how do we do those forecasts out into the future? Who's leading it? Who's leading? These are just a lot of people on Plant Village, so we're just currently practicing. But we want to see your not-for-profit or your company or, or, or your community using this so collectively you can see this maybe maybe it's your your community and we want to you want to have your own people represented on such a panel so you can see who's doing well and and who you need to perhaps do refresher training on uh provide more information um engage more etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's it the system is 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 not dissimilar to any knowledge-based system that comes out of a university. Uh, the idea is that it is a work in progress. It is something that 
we necessarily need feedback on. To reiterate very pointedly, uh, we are a global public good. We are at the university. Um, I do have a company, Carbon for Good, that's working with Biochar Life, and Carbon for Good will be using the software. But we want lots of profits and non-profits to use the software. And, and we want people to request features, uh, something that is beneficial to you uh, could be beneficial to others. Uh, fundamentally, I personally believe that, that that these things should be in the public and available, such that your ability to engage customers, uh, sell to them, buy from them, do whatever you do, that's different from the monitoring and evaluation system that we need to have. Uh, and I think we all agree after a number of rather high profile exposés that the more public and more transparent we can be with our system, the better. And in the case of Plant Village, it has radical transparency, but it also has lots of other types of data. Um, I showed you the data from, from satellites and, and also uh, soil sampling, and this will just increase over time. We just want to have lots of it in 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 the platform so that we can understand what are the positive and negative effects of what we're doing around biochar. This does not have to be just biochar. This could work for enhanced rec rock weathering, um, uh, blue carbon. So so we could use this in in kelp forests just as easily as we do it on land, um, and perhaps also in aspects of direct air capture and so on and so forth. Um, we we were lucky to win the milestone prize and the and the monitoring recording and evaluation prize uh, on X prize. And for us, it's really important to get feedback on on how we could use this. Personally, I think if we all are on one transparent public platform, that's better. My background is as a rainforest ecologist working on a variety of um, different systems, but one of which required genetic identification of fungal diseases. Uh, and that's all stored in the public database called GenBank. And yes, there's lots of errors and problems in that. 20% of fungal sequences in GenBank are incorrect but it's a self-correcting system that's open to the public. So just like we have GenBank, I believe we should have a carbon bank. And I believe that should be at a global um, public university uh, available to everybody. And I also think that we should use the, some of the profits that, that come from the carbon markets to fund ongoing developers and work. You know, Plant Village has spent a lot of money on getting to where we are and all of that is public money and it's all for everybody. But going forward, we need we need much more investment. We need we need and we need sustainable models. Um, I don't believe these should be in the private sector. I believe they should be in the public. And I think that private sector funds from the carbon markets can help us uh, pay for those developers and and also uh, developers in the global south, which I think will be very beneficial to have. So that's an insight into our system. Um, I hope that helps. Um, maybe this gets 20 views on YouTube. Maybe it starts a vibrant conversation that's in the thousands. I don't know. Uh, but just wanted to share it with everybody and get your feedback. So, you know, write to us below, put some comments below, reach out to us, uh, sign up for Plant Village, request account, and let's all collectively work on the biggest problem humanity has ever faced. Thank you so much indeed. Bye-bye.